goats of all times? Did they mention the fact that he's a cheating bastard? <laughs> They didn't mention that little aspect. And that whole organization for the last 15 years has a history of bending the rules. It's, it's not just me saying that hating. It's documented. They have paid, if you're new to the Doug Stewart Show, I'm sorry, like a broken record here. They have paid almost, I think it was $1.75 million in fines because of cheating. <laughs> It's crazy how they just ignore that part of the conversation where anybody else, you know, outside of the New England Patriots, man, whenever you bring up something positive and somebody's done something negative, quote unquote, negative in the past, they always make sure to 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 add that part to the story, like like kind of like a, a, a bookmark or not a bookmark or, a, uh, you know, just like a, a, a little part of the story an addendum, I guess. And they never do that. They never talk about the Patriots' history whenever they talk about the great things that they've done. Winning a Super Bowl, coming back from 25 points, Tom Brady's the GOAT. But but the narrative, part of the narrative about that team and that organization and the quarterback should be their cheating past. Right. Now, I think Derek Rivers is going to go there and change the culture and turn them into some upstanding citizens. <laughs> Right, but before Derek Rivers got there, they have a history of being cheaters. From D. Bell, good morning, sir. He says, morning, Stu, he's been listening, just getting a chance to speak. What up, D. Bell? Good morning to you, sir. Um, from Ralph Scott, Petey used to roll with Biggie back in the day. He's cool with all the Jamaican businessmen in Brooklyn. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he's from New York City, man, and... Uh, very tough uh, to do business with. Let's just put it like that. From Sluggo, x squad reaching in jacket to cut your ass to the white meat. <laughs> right. I don't know if the dude was his name, Matt, that had the little argument with Peter in the uh, radio station. I don't know if he realized, but the entire time, if you watch the video, Peter had his hand in his, his coat pocket, and I don't think that he could actually get it out. That's why he didn't slice dude up. The dude came very close to being sliced up. From Rough Buff, Peter didn't pay Doug uh, his happy hour money. I'm not going to get into details, man, but let's just put it like this. He owe me some damn money. From That Ninja, if you tease a move for over a month, you can expect jokes. Why? There's no time frame in teasing. Okay, there's no time frame. There's no nowhere in a, in a in a teasing manual or how long you can tease. They tease movies for a year out. I can tease the move to the DougSureShow.com for a couple of months if I want to. You can't tell me how to tease, Jack. I can tease for six months if I want. There ain't no damn rules on how to tease. You're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. From Al Thompson, thanks, Doug. I'm going to write that down. 5-12-17, when ninjas finally got their 40 acres and a mule. That's right, Ninjaville. (laughs) Yes, sir. That ninja once again, uh, he says, in Ninjaville, the wings are never undercooked. I agree. I always get my wings crispy. I think that's just what we do as black folks. Uh, can we get them extra crispy <laughs> from this Mocha Bell X squad? I will be the communications director of Ninjaville. We got to have elections now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Y'all getting ahead of yourself. We may try to do something with this whole theme. From Andre Elam, he says, I'm running for District 1 City Council in Ninjaville. <laughs> Funny. KC, Doug, who paid for the Mother's Day dinner? You or Doug's new daddy? Uh, yeah. From uh, LD, Sheriff from Ninjaville, from the D. 
you a sheriff. Every now and then, a ninja needs to get kicked in the balls, needs some act right. Nah. Nah, oh nah. Um, from Gilead Rose Fine Seafood Fest every weekend during the summer in Ninjaville. From uh, that Ninja Sluggo, I have nothing against cheese, just condiments. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Why is there a discussion about condiments on a big Monday after a big sports weekend? Why is there a discussion about cheese and condiments? Only in Ninjaville. <laughs> From Andre Elam, GRF, a low country ball every month in Ninjaville <laughs> when food stamp. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, man. Um, from Andre Elam, Ruff, I watched every, I watched Terry Kirby play football in high school in Virginia. Dude was a stud, too. The great Terry Kirby. I ain't heard that name in a long time. Running back from Virginia. Uh, another one of them big running backs during that time. Kirby came along, like, right during my era, I think, probably right in the late 80s as well. I can't remember exactly when. Redland, drunk of Ninjaville Kirby. <laughs> so you're going to be you gonna be the oldest of Mayberry, like oldest of Mayberry, the town drunk? You're going to be the town drunk of Ninjaville? Really? That's what we're doing? That's what we doing. That's what we doing, Redland Kirk. Uh, so she was traumatized that that's a lawsuit terms, a laugh out loud. I don't know what he's talking about. From Kyle says, called her emotion distress. She could, she couldn't, or she could, couldn't, I think he meant couldn't, couldn't sleep or work for days. From Andre Elon Babb, I believe Terry Kirby broke Emmett Smith's high school touchdown record. Yeah, during the late 80s, Terry Kirby came out he played in the NFL for who Miami I think he played for Miami for a couple of years I don't think he had the career that a lot of people thought that he possibly could have in the uh in the NFL but Terry Kirby was a beast uh, big running back 6'2 probably about 225 something like that from Sluggo the classic before money and after money case study from Grego judge of Ninjaville <laughs> oh so now you're a judge you ain't went to law school the first <laughs> Uh, laugh my ass off, Nino. From Nino the Wino, I got kicked off a Greyhound bus and nobody said ish. <laughs> when did you get kicked off a Greyhound bus? I need more particulars on that story. Uh, I talked earlier about how this type of thing and people getting kicked off a, uh, the plane probably happens a lot and happened more than we knew about back in the day, but we just never saw it on a videotape. Now everybody is videotaping your ass. You can't get away with shit no more. Praise God for camera phones. Yeah. Griff in the chat room on Spreaker.com. What up, Griff? He says, laugh out loud. Voted best by Southern Bell Magazine, South Carolina State's homecoming. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Don't hate on Southern Bell Magazine. They did a long, extensive investigation. Focus groups. Polls. They did. And they determined that South Carolina State had the number one HBCU homecoming in the world. Now, Griff went to A&T. So, obviously, he's a little biased. Don't be mad, Griff. Don't lie, Griff. You know good well South Carolina State got the best homecoming in the world. And now we got Miss USA. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yeah. Choochie talk about why couldn't she have gone to Claflin? Whatever. <laughs> no way. No way. No way could somebody cross the fence and be Miss America or Miss USA before someone from South Carolina State. <laughs> no way. Yeah. From uh, Big Apple Bastard once again. Remember that 1990 game, Georgia Tech at UVA number one? Not only do I remember it, I was there. 
That's right. I was there. Ryan, that was Ryan's. I told the story before. That was one of Ryan's recruiting trips. Um, and at the time, remember, Virginia was good. What was their quarterback name? Sean. I can't remember the quarterback name. Mm. But they had a squad, man. Herman Moore was the wide receiver. Quarterback might have been Sean Moore or something like that, I believe. Um, on that team as well was Jesse Jackson's son. I think Yusef Jackson played linebacker. Jesse Jackson sat right behind us in the stands. No lie. Put my hand up to God. And uh, Yusef was a linebacker on that team. They had a squad. And uh, and that game went down as a tie. That was the tie that they had that year as well. All right, when we get back from the break, man, a little football talk from the NFL. Back in three minutes, the Doug Stewart Show. Don't go away. Life is what we make it. People try to get up out the game. I'm pretty sure it stops if they stop shipping things. See why the boys flex, just like girls trip. I knew they had a plan to make us want to deal. They watch some drop out school. They watch some play the fool. So they can hit the streets. So they can see the truth. The truth was in our heart. The truth we never read. The truth was never said. The truth was never dead. The truth was dead on real. And we would never fade. Said that no need to hate. Go ahead, congratulate. See, God is on my side. And God is with our people. This ain't no other sequel. Cause we were never equal. And let me tell y'all that I'm not in this game. For the fortune of fame. I just try to maintain. Because we want a meal. Who said we had to kill? I know there's more to life than Jackie playing bills. Gotta lose. You sick of paying debts? We sick of paying dues. You know the one who that we belong to. So get your hands off our land, please, won't you? I'm living in the city, I'm living in the A. And this is for my people who struggle every day. It's simple mathematics, we learn in first grade. What do these numbers make? It's time to get paid, it's time to break chains, it's time to make a change. Better get your money, brother, and get up out the game. No one can hold me, no one can fold me. I only play this game, how my people show me. Life is what we make. 